Just make. Hey, everybody, we're back. Castellanes and Racine host for the 12th time of the Midwinter High School Classic. This is the 2021-22 edition. This is your boys' championship match. We'll get that graphic fixed. Got to talk to the graphics department. I'm telling you, sometimes those guys are slacking a little bit. As we got the boys' final in their last few minutes of practice. And that boys' final is number one seed Indian Trail out of Kenosha versus Oak Creek. Both of these teams have taken home the title in past editions of this Midwinter Classic. And they've battled each other in the final round back in 2017 where Indian Trail took home the title. So once again, these players taking the lane. No reconditioning of the lanes from after the Girls final, you just saw Beaver Dam coming out on top. Two games to none against Kenosha Tremper for their first Midwinter Classic title. Tight games, both games came down to marks in the 10th frame for the anchor bowler for Beaver Dam to take home that title. And while we're finishing up our last couple minutes of practice, If you're a high school bowling fan, and I just was notified of this from uh, Robert Vader a couple days ago. Apparently, he didn't say I lied about saying this is the only inter-district team competition during the regular season outside of state for these young players. But he's starting an event up at Sabre Lanes for high school players. And that is on a Saturday, so that's going to be tough for District 1 high school to make it as that is a Saturday, but I'm sure we got a lot of high school teams up there. Uh, individual team qualifying, not Baker, until they get to the match play portion of the tournament. So it should be pretty interesting as that gets closer. So call Sabre Lanes or look for them on Facebook. Or... Yeah, I can't find the event, unfortunately. It just popped in my head during practice. Somebody made mention about it. But uh, February 5th, another high school bowling event up at Sabre Lanes. Get a hold of Dan Patterson or Marcus Wise up at Sabre Lanes for information on that event. So we're going to have another 45 seconds of practice, and the coaches are going to make their lineups. We'll get the lane assignments made. Uh, Indian Trail, which lane they're going to prefer to take in game one. And then we will get underway. So enjoy the ambient sounds and beautiful sights of Castle Lanes while we finish our practice. And we'll be back with game one action momentarily.
All right, we're almost ready to rock and roll here. All right, crowds are fired up. And there you go, Indian Trail getting things going for them. Oak Creek going to be getting themselves going. All right, and leading off, Ashley Moroski for Indian Trail. Ashley, a junior. And she's really good at math. Hey, that's a good thing to be good at. I'll tell you what, if you want to make a lot of money in this world, be a mathematician working statistics, all kinds of other fun stuff. You can make yourself a lot of money getting out of high school and college with math. And that one there, and the puddle makes them pay. As Moroski probably playing that nice tight line in the pocket here on the Castle Lane's house shot, and she leaves herself with the 8-10 split early on. Moroski, she can bowl one game with any living person. Wouldn't be a bowler. Be Randall Cobb, her favorite football player. Go Pat, go. Well, it's a little tough for Randall Bull right now with that core injury he's got going. As Moroski looks to just take the one. Almost got a lucky bounce there, but ends up being. Just an open frame for Indian Trail to start out. You've got Liam Belmas starting off for Earl Creek. And that's 10 back for Belmas. And Ben Mikola Jozak stepping up the freshman for Indian Trail. His best bowling achievement so far, he's got his highest three career games all in the same series to make his career series. That doesn't happen very often. That's definitely something to be proud of in your bowling career. And once again, maybe lane three, we saw towards the end of the girls' final match. where that lane seemed to be playing a little bit tighter for Kenosha Tremper. And maybe that's it for Indian Trail. Indian Trail did have lane choice as they were the number one seed after qualifying. They had an opening round bye and then battled Sun Prairie in the second round of match play. And a tricky conversion there for Indian Trail. But they all go down. Indian Trail took down Sun Prairie. Three games to two in a tough match that went to all five. And then took down McQuanago three games to one. Josh Jacoby up, the senior from Old Creek High School. Coming in off the port side. And you watch that four pin just wrap the seven. And once again, the polyester coming out to make things happen. Oak Creek was a number three qualifier. They had a first round buy and match play as well in the 12 team field. They took out Greenfield in the semifinal match, or pardon me, in the second round match. And then in the third round, the semifinals, as that hooks away. For Jacoby in the open frame. Oak Creek took down Oosberg Sheboygan North Co op in three straight. Here's a man you saw the other day in the high school mixed doubles from Classic Lanes in Greenfield with Ben Jelkman.
Jelkman. A tie for third finish with his partner there. That partner being Moraski. And there you see the week 10. And yeah, there's definitely some tightness down lane on lane three. Once again, we started bowling this morning at 10 a.m. A ton of Baker games. And the girls bowled on this pattern for most of the day. Cover for Jelkman, no problem. And Dane Pinter stepping up. Pintar, sophomore at Oak Creek. Wants to go to Hawaii someday for his dream trip. And he's gonna get a huge lucky break there. He started getting in the fall. Just the four pin remains on the light hit. Sunday mornings, if you don't find Pinter on the lanes, you're going to find him playing games at home, most likely video games, I assume, for what he seems there, because he seems to be a Steam fan. Steam that game service. Jake Evans, we've seen a lot of Jake over the years in the high school competitions. Skill or talent? I don't know if it's skill being double-jointed, but it's definitely... Helps to do some talent if you're double jointed. As that one comes light for Evitz, 210. That's going to cause some issues. Remember back in the day, Jimmy Keith back in the 80s and early 90s, great bowler on the PBA Tour, double jointed thumb and hand. And of course, Jacob Buttruff nowadays as well on the PBA Tour. Buttruff notoriously double jointed. Help him get those revolutions on that bowling ball. Evitz not going to be able to give it a shot. No bounce, no love. And the first open frame on the board, pardon me, the second open frame on the board for Indian Trail. And they can find themselves down by 13. With Caitlin Stats stepping up. Stats, the last two years for high school state. She's been a qualifier. And you can see with that ball just not finishing enough to take the 10 down. And once again, these house patterns, you get a lot of oil in the middle of the lane. These players get deeper, and they try to get that ball to flip over a little harder on the back end. If they catch a little carry down or even catch too much oil in the front lane, ball just doesn't have a chance to react properly. And you start seeing the weak corner pins. And that holds on nicely. Cover for stats. And stats you saw her and her partner Monday night as well. In our mixed doubles finals from Classical and Greenfield. Once again, I want to thank Phil and Patty Anko, Alan Blom, all the staff here at Castle Lanes for hosting us again this year, 12th year, as Travis Weber, the sophomore, steps up. Had his first 300 when he was 12 years old. And you can see with the high revolution game that Weber has. They'll start kicking some corners out when need be. Joe Irvin, the senior, ending up in the number five spot for Oak Creek. He loves him some Belmo, his favorite player, as we see with a lot of players enjoying the two-handed styles nowadays. That saw that ball start to hook, stop, and hook again. That's what we're talking about, this lane pattern. All these games they bowl on today, it's pretty chewed up. Still enough in it with the volume here at Castle Lanes where bowlers don't have to get too far to the right, or pardon me, too far to the left in order to keep the ball in play. Oh, that's what I like to see, a sports nut. Ashley Moroski, ESPN, her favorite app on her phone. Got to keep up what's going on with the Packers, the Bucks. Hopefully the Brewers, and that's uh, going to be interesting as that pin comes quite a ways out. We're going to have to respot that four pin. So Let's 
So we'll get that respotted. It'll take a second here. So taking a look at the crowd down here, uh, we're getting done just in time here at Castle Lanes. We took up the, most of the house this morning. And uh, looks like the city of Racine is starting to get out for the New Year's Eve festivities as uh, most of the lanes we had in play earlier filled up with families having a good time. New Year's Eve special early here with it being a Friday. $2 games, $2 shoes until their big New Year's Eve party starts. And uh, whenever you're here, they got the 34 fan club bundle if you're a Giannis fan with the Bucks, A 100-ounce beer tube, a Coors Light, a one-topping pizza, and order of mozzarella sticks here at Castle Lanes for 34 bucks. Don't have to be a league bowler to get that. Anybody can come into Castle Lanes. Great grill they have here. Great pizza. Love the pizza here. So, and there we go. The four is respawned. It's back to its original spot because the pin setter knocked it over. So it can't be respawned to where it was moved to. So Moroski looking to just go right towards it. And it's a fortunate break, too, because that four moved so far, it could have been choppable. And gets them both to go. And we've got Liam Belmis stepping up. Very good at gaming, so that apparently tells me don't play Minecraft or anything like that for money against Liam Belmis because I'll most likely lose one of my most embarrassing moments, losing me baseball to my godson when he was seven years old by 11 to nothing. Had a mercy rule. Belmis gets it to go. Big double for Oak Creek and that lead right now. Out to 22 pins. With Clayton Zimel, Zivel stepping up. Zivel a junior. So once again, Indian Trail taking advantage of the substitution rule. You can substitute a player at any time in a game, but once a player is removed, they cannot return until the following game. to see if they can start a little fire here with the Zival. Watch that ball finish down lane. Six takes the 10. And don't count Indian Trail out of this one yet. Still down 22, but they still have a possible max score of 215. And all it takes is a string of strikes to stop for Oak Creek and Indian Trail to keep striking and uh, that lead for Oak Creek can disappear very quick. Jacoby stepping up on the port side another seven pin for Jacoby. So Jacoby's got to find out something and uh, unfortunately next time he gets to find it out is on lane three as these teams will switch lanes after this opening game. Once again, a best of three match here in the Midwinter Classic Finals. Jacoby just gets the tickle down. Keeps the lead at 21. With Cameron Oglesby, the senior, stepping up. Cameron, if he could bowl one game with anyone, it would be his granddad because he's the one who influenced his bowling. So that's always good to see. Hanging with the family, having a day, having a game with your grandparent. And on Sunday mornings, if he's not bowling at the bowling alley, he's working at the bowling alley. So he always be definitely keeping himself busy. And a big double for Indian Trail. Like we said, all it takes is the string, the stop for Oak Creek and a string to start for Indian Trail. And things can change in a quick amount of time. So Dane Pinter stepping up. Pinter loves this Clash Royale on his phone, his favorite app. That needs some help to hold. Oh, look at that. I thought that was going to go four pin high or worse, and that just set up beautifully for Pinter. 
Well, as we said, Indian Trail, their max 215. Evitz needs to set it up here in the foundation frame. But Oak Creek can strike out for 226. Not quite a must here for Evitz, but definitely a big need. Sits up nicely. Wow. Unbelievable. Finishes so hard on the back end, and that four pin gets sent on the right side of the seven. The two pin comes back in front of it off the sidewall. I mean, that, that's, power, that's a powerful shot, no doubt about it, and that's a pack pocket bad break at the wrong time. For Indian Trail, as now that's going to bring their max down to 194, and wow, taking the real scenic route, coast to coast, for Everett's on the spare, and Caitlin Stats looking to put up the foundation frame strike and really put the thumb screws to Indian Trail for their 10th frame. Stats on target line. Stats mixes it up. There's 10 down. And now Travis Weber just trying to get as many pins as he can. Needs to strike out to get to 194, and that's going to force Oak Creek to get a possible mark depending on count on the first ball in the 10th. And like you said, that's with a full ride here for Weber. And Indian Trail. And yeah, Weber gets that one to go. No quitting that young man. And you know anything can happen. You strike out the other team. Sometimes you think the simplest thing is just to get a mark and all of a sudden a washout or a Greek church pops up and that mark gets real tough to get. So Weber, just going through the pre-shot routine, always the best thing to do. Doesn't matter, get the emotions in check. Get down to business when you need it. Sits up, six does the job on the 10 again. Creek's going to have to show up in the 10th to take down game one. Count here a little bit important as well for Weber. So 10 on the fill ball would be optimal for Indian Trail. Head pin barely tickles the seven down for that 194. And we got Joey Irvin. Needs Mark. If you were to go nine miss, they'd end up at 193. Irvin, that one hooked up early on, but wow. Wow. He trusted that one to the right more than I thought he could. And there it is. Creek is going to take down game one. We'll give them that first game on the scoreboard. And they're going to move over to lane three and have their chance to take down this midwinter high school classic title in two games. Once again, best two or three match. As they're looking at that 226 maximum. Coaches will get a chance to talk to the players for a couple minutes between games. So once again, we'll have a slight audio intermission. And Oak Creek's going to be looking to end this match in two straight games. Oak Creek. Up one game to none in this best of three match. Game two coming up shortly here from Castle Lanes and Racine. Thank you. 
All right, game one in the books here. The Midwinter Classic, Oak Creek takes down that first game, 226 to 194. So they're looking to close this out in two straight. And no changes to either team's lineups entering game two. So Liam Belmas kicking things off for Oak Creek High School. He's most proud of throwing a 279 game in league a few weeks back as his career highlight to this point. And he's looking to start Oak Creek off with a strike here. Seven, wiggle, jiggle, and do nothing but laugh at him. But a relatively simple spare left for Belmas. We always say relatively simple when it comes to single pins, but we all know nerves can come into play, especially in situations like this. You're leading off for your team. Taking the scenic route at that seven pin. Belmas covers it up. And we see Ashley Morosky stepping up for Indian Trail. Morosky, oh, she's got her life priorities in order, man. Reading and watching the Packers on a Sunday. Nothing better. Nothing better than that. I'll tell you, the whole Morosky family, what a bunch of just incredible human beings they are as I watch it next to me in the booth and they all start chuckling. First frame, game two. Morosky needs some help and wow, that six slices out, doesn't touch the three or the 10. And we'll see her go to the polyester, of course, best way to pick this up, as we all know. Let the ball do all the work on the three and the 10, place it right between. And she's got that interchangeable thumb grip. I love those, doesn't matter what brand you use. Everybody's got their favorite, but getting that same feel from ball to ball, especially going from reactive to urethane or reactive to polyester. Keeping that same feel with a thumb insert, huge when it comes to needing to make clutch spares like this. And that needs some help. And as you see, ball doesn't deflect enough off the three. 10 stays. And Indian Trail finds himself in early trouble here in game two of this best two or three match. Josh Jacoby, the senior. His bowling idols are Parker Bowen, the third, Chris Barnes, and his dad. I like two of the three of them. I'll let you imagine which ones they are. Coming in off the port side, looking to take 10 down. No seven pins like he was plagued with in game one. Dead flush. And now with Ben Mikolajak taking the approach. I'd like to thank the Indian Trail family for helping me out with that name the second time around. Mikolajak looking to put a strike on the board. That hooks early and he gets a huge break crossing over. It's 10 on the scoreboard. Doesn't matter how you get him down. And now Dane Pintar stepping up in the third frame for Oak Creek. As we mentioned, both teams sticking with the same lineup coming through. Indian Trail is going to rotate through seven players in their lineup. Oak Creek right now staying with their starting five. And Pintar looking to get a double on the board for Oak Creek, and he does. And a huge double for Oak Creek here with Ben Jelkman stepping up in Indian Trail's half of the third frame, looking to match that double and stay within 11 pins. Jelkman, really good cook for his hidden talent, he says. Looking to cook up 10 back. Yes, he does. There's a little sizzle on that one. And in Indian Trail just down by 11 pins as Caitlin Stats enters Oak Creek's fourth frame. Sunday mornings, she's not in the lanes yet. She's catching a few naps here and there. 
Stats needs that to face quicker, and it just doesn't. We've seen that lane play a little tighter for the lower rev players, and the 2 4 5. A Chapman will leave here for Stats. One place she wants to travel, Australia. But she gets a chance. I've seen a couple, I've known a couple young, well, no longer young players, but we had some bowlers that ended up taking some uh, college studies in Australia. Lisa Ish, who used to bowl for UW Whitewater, uh, spent a semester abroad in Australia. She said that was the best thing she ever did, was taking that semester abroad. Jake Evitz wants to go to Hawaii when he gets a chance. I'm sure his mom and dad would love to do that as well. Looking to get things going here, and the four just defies Evitz. And they're looking at that lead being still a mark for Oak Creek with a conversion here by Evitz. Bowling idol, Francois Lavoie. I can see a little Frankie Lavoie style in here for Evitz. Flips it down on the bottom, comes in nicely, no problem covering it up. But nine pins the difference. Oak Creek with that lead entering the fifth frame of game two. Joey Urban. Let's go to California. I wonder if he's gonna be like a surfer, maybe the restaurants. I don't think he'd be in wine country yet. I don't think he'd be a Napa kind of kid. But he's looking to create a strike here in frame five. And now you see he was worried about it from the get-go. And the momentum started the swing. You saw that four pin just slide right in the flat gutter standing up. Never had a chance to tip over into the seven to try to break up the split. So let's see if he gives it a shot here. Really count. Kind of in the middle right now, five or six pins different. So it's uh, one of those areas where you're looking at like either needing a mark or a double to make things up. But he just gets the two. Well, there's O'Kree with 93 in the fifth. Indian Trail, if Weber would strike here in the fifth. He can take. A five pin lead for Indian Trail. That'd be the first lead they've seen all day. Weber's bowling idol, West Malat. I'm gonna lie and say Weber's, if you could bowl one game with a, any living person, it would be West Malat. He left it blank, so I would think he would have a problem bowling with Wes. And how about that for Weber? Mix them up. Five pins now the advantage for Indian Trail with half of our second game remaining of this best of three match. Liam Belmis stepping up in the sixth, trying to stop the bleeding for Oak Creek on that fifth frame open. And gets the rack, shreds it down. Comes back trying to get the team fired up, arms in the air. Ashley Morosky now talking things over with the coaches and getting ready to step up, trying to bounce back off of her. 310 split in the first frame. Double here would be huge. We get their advantage out to 15 pins in the second game. Biggest influence on her bowling career. Dwayne Morosky has coached her since she was four years old. And her biggest bowling moment, you saw it earlier this week, the third place finish at the high school mixed doubles. Ben Jelkman. Morosky gets at the face nicely. Six does the job in the 10. Huge, huge double in the fifth and sixth now for Indian Trail. 
And now it's up to Josh Jacoby to match. That's the thing right now for Oak Creek. They're needing the strike to play catch up at this point in game two. Off the hand nicely, comes in and just gets that eight pin down. How about that for Jacoby? And now it's up to Clayton Zeibel coming in the seventh frame with this rotation, seven player rotation that Indian Trail is using for their Baker games. Zeibel, when he's not in the lanes, loves to make 3D models with printers, 3D printers. That's a technology that someone's going to be making a ton of money on of all the way through the future. Four goes, seven goes, ten goes. Put a turkey on the board for Indian Trail. And uh, I thought he'd be a little more fired up after catching a break like that, but cool, calm, and collected. Zeibel makes his way back. And now it's up to Dane Pinter once again. Oak Creek's got to keep matching, just stay within a few pins here in game two. Pinter gets that one to sit up, and the five just tickles the 10. We saw the smash seven for Evitz last game in an opportune spot. Now another seven pin for Pinter, inopportune this time for Oak Creek. And it is going to be a huge eighth frame coming up for Indian Trail here in game two. Once again, taking the scenic route dead on at seven. And here comes Cameron Oglesby up at frame number eight. Biggest bowling achievement recently. He's won the EYT doubles Diana Aspides tour down in the Chicagoland area. That is a prestigious youth tour. Oglesby, wow. The vapor trail from that head pin coming back across should have sucked the 10 pin down. A flat gutter, terrible break there for Oglesby, but the thing is with his team right now, Spare Maid keeps the lead. Looking to keep their advantage at 15 pins. Oh, a little grabby on the bottom, and that's the problem. The lead still there for Indian Trail with two frames to go, but it's just three pins. Caitlin Stats stepping up ninth frame. She won a bowl game with Cole Sprouse, given the chance. She's always wanted to meet him. And oh my, you just saw that ball just do nothing to pick up on the way down the lane. Easiest way, I remember Pete Weber telling me this. I mean, as rare as, you know, nowadays the professionals leaving five sevens with Pete back in the day on tour early on. You leave him, he goes, my dad always told me, just move my feet three boards to the left from where I threw my strike ball. And it should be right on target to slide that five into the seven just like that. Talk about a huge conversion at a clutch point in time. Take that 5-7. You try to defy Caitlin Stats, she will take you down. Jake Evans stepping up. The lead is still with Indian Trail right now by five pins. Evans, ninth frame. Real big wheel on that shot. Huge foundation frame strike. And now Joey... Irvin's going to need to get, we saw this last game, you got to get the punch in the 10th and all three to put a little pressure on your opponent. That's Irvin's job right now. Irvin loves the Snapchat. Great way to keep communicating with friends. And that ball... I'm wondering if the Indian Trail coaches are paying attention to what happened in those last two shots because they look, the one in the ninth by stats was a little pulling in the puddle the whole way, but that one there by Irvin, 
looked like it should have finished a little harder, and it did absolutely nothing. So once again, no practice for these players as they go. Thing is, too, Indian Trail, higher seed coming into this final. They can either stay on lane four or switch like they normally would in a high school match when it comes to this crucial final game of the match. So Travis Orr is going to take a reset here. But really right now it's just needs six pins on two balls. And we're going to be going to a game three. And we'll have to see what Indian Trail is going to decide to do for lane movement in that case. If they're going to stay on lane four or if they're going to make a move back to lane three. Should be interesting. They'll have a minute or two to talk it over before they have to make that decision. There you go. There's a strike. To lock up. Game two. Let's add it there. There you go. One game apiece. We're coming down to that deciding third game. Winner take all, single game. Two frames a player. Maybe even one a player if Indian Trail stays with their seven player rotation. We'll let the choice, we'll let the coach from Indian Trail make their choice on what they want to do for lane movement. We'll get the players moved around. We'll check on lineups. Meanwhile, enjoy the end of game two. Game three coming up next. All right, Indian Trail has decided to stay on that right lane, lane four here at Castle Lanes in Racine. You can't blame them after coming out with 214. Two fourteen to the one eighty five of Oak Creek. We're even at one game apiece. And Oak Creek just going through some last strategy on what they want to do. And we're ready to rock and roll. There's going to be a lineup change for Oak Creek in order. Not in players. We're still going to see Liam Belmas lead things off. If you're an Indian Trail fan, no changes to their seven-player rotation here in game three. And let's see what Belmas can do here. Try to fire Oak Creek up. Coming out of the gates. Online. Six does the job in the 10. There you see the fist go in the air. Getting his team fired up, getting his fans fired up. Come on, come on. 
And Ashley Morosky looking to highlight her junior year with a midwinter high school classic title. Great event we had at Classic Lanes Greenfield on Monday with the high school mixed doubles championship. Great teams that came out, Morosky and Jelkman from Indian Trail. Took down a tie for third. There's one for Morosky. Big clutch early strike. As they match Oak Creek's first frame. And we've got to move Joey Irvin's moving out of the number five spot into the number two spot for Oak Creek. Flips it out nicely, comes in a little too hard and takes the chop out of play. With the six tripping out on the 10. And I think we're seeing a little over under reaction. It's uh, not the Pro Tour over under you see where the Pro Tour, the, the guys get a little farther left in its skates, or a little farther right in its skates and a little farther left in it hooks. This is the opposite. Get a left here in this house pattern starting to skate. It's a little different cliff, as the guys call it. As that one pitched a little right early for Irvin, and after sliding into a bucket in his 10th frame, makes the correction. Now he's got to come in high. He's got to figure something out when he's up again in the seventh frame. Nikolai Jack stepping up for Indian Trail, taking the deep breath, taking his time on the back of the approach as the teams do some spare ball maintenance, getting the extra bowling balls off the rack. Nikolai Jack wants to go to Dallas. And he gets a chance, big double early for Indian Trail. Early 10 pin advantage with Dane Pinter stepping up for Oak Creek in the third. Pinter, if he gets a chance to bowl with somebody. I've never seen Donald Trump with a bowling ball in his hand, but he wants to meet Donald Trump as he tips over the five to the right. And Pinter gets another strike on the board for Oak Creek. We've seen Richard Nixon with a bowling ball in his hand. We saw George Bush Sr. bowl at Serb Hall in Milwaukee years ago. He kind of took a tumble. We've seen Barack Obama bowl. I've never seen Donald Trump with a bowling ball in his hand for former presidents. So, Jelkman looking to get three in a row on the board. You just saw the balance was not there at the line. Falls off to the right. Shot goes right. Never picks up. And the more ways to miss it than make it leave at the end of the lane with that two, five, and eight combination. Come up too light, you don't take the eight. Come up firm on the two, you chop that off the five. Let's see what Jelkman does here. Looks like he's gonna maybe take a little bit of the scenic road at it. And he gets three. And he knows how huge that conversion was at that point in time. As that gets an early seven pin advantage for Indian Trail, but guess what? Caitlin Stats can step up here and take that lead right back for Oak Creek. She trusts it a little farther right, it comes in and still almost left the five seven. This is a tough thing to call right now on if you're a coach for your player because your player's getting in the pocket but the ball is just not using, it's either burning energy too quick when it gets right or not having enough energy when it gets left. We saw him leave a five, seven in two different ways. And that's gonna hurt. And Evitz is wasting no time getting up on the approach, trying to jump on the open frame for Oak Creek. Let's see what Evans can do here. 
the fourth frame. Way right, comes back left, pure. 10 back. And now, moving in the number five spot, out of the number two spot, Josh Jacoby, moving the port sider. We saw him go flush, flush in game two on this lane. Smart move by the coaches. I mean, when it's your most consistent player getting in the pocket and nobody else is touching his side. Let the lefty pick up some of the slack for the team. Right there, 10 back. Stops the bleeding quickly. Don't count Oak Creek out of this yet. One mistake, one stumble by Indian Trail, and it's back to being a wide open game three. Travis Weber is stepping up. We saw him clutch that shot in the 10th frame, game two to lock that up and force this third game between Indian Trail and Oak Creek. Weber sets it down smooth, comes in, gets the trip on the four. And Indian Trail is feeling it now. They're feeling the momentum coming their way. They're up by 19 currently. Belmas can drop that back to nine here in the sixth frame for Oak Creek. Belmas right in there. Belmas, I'll tell you what, he's been doing the job a leadoff bowler needs to do. If you can't get a strike like he has three of the four times he's been up there recently, get the ball on target. Look at what the lane's doing. Let your teammates know what's going on. And he came back after the little celebration there, and he's talking to his teammates, letting them know what he found in that shot. You got to do that. Communication, not just between the coaches and the players is key, but between the players themselves all the way through a match is huge. After this, Moroski is nothing but a spectator. So you know she wants to finish her day off with 10 in the pit. Look at her post that shot. 10 back. A thing of beauty right there for Moroski. Turkey on the board for Indian Trail. Oak Creek can match with her own turkey. Joey Irvin can strike here in the seventh frame. He's checking out that sliding sole once again. Wasn't too sure of it after his opening shot in frame number two this game. As he left the single pin and converted. Flips it through, needs to hold, does not do so, breaks up the split but ends the strike string at two for Oak Creek. We saw a second place finish for an Oak Creek team at the Wisconsin Mixed Doubles Championship back on Monday as the team from Racine Case took down Oak Creek in that Mixed Doubles final. And it could be Indian Trail's, Indian Trail's turn to put another second place finish on the board for Oak Creek this week. Once again, the seven person rotation. Biggest shot of Clayton Zeibel's day today, right here, right now. He'll put his team up by 31. With a strike here in the seventh frame. Watch the revs on that shot. Comes up high. Another break. And leaves himself the makeable, the 6'10. And Oak Creek doesn't see that door close any farther. But the daylight behind that door is starting to disappear as the frames count down. Twenty-nine pins the advantage for Indian Trail if Zival converts on this six ten. One place he wants to travel is Japan. Take the bowling ball there too. 
Lots of beautiful bowling centers in Japan. Got to see a couple of them back in my extra frame days at the PBA. Hope to get a chance to go back myself someday. And wow. I think half the oxygen in the Indian Trail section of the crowd here got uh, sucked out in a big inhale as they saw that ball hold the edge for Zival. And now Dane Pinter trying to help get to that 226 max that Oak Creek still has. Indian Trail goes strike spare off the sheet. They'd be at 225, so still a game here. That strong, heavy roll for Pinter. Gets it going, and once again, seeing the seven person rotation coming to play. Cameron Oglesby stepping up, eighth frame. Loves being on Snapchat. Snaps off a 10 pin. Keeps that advantage at 29. But once again, not over yet, but Stats has to be in mandatory strike mode on this shot, being down 29 with just two frames remaining. Strike on the board, comes up, and that time the head pin does the job on the four, five, and seven. And now Evans has got to return the favor in Indian Trails half in the ninth frame. Keep that lead at 29. Sunday morning, Evitz likes hanging out with his friends if he's not at the bowling alley. He can make a few more friends with this shot. Wrap 10, and things have now gotten real interesting for the 10th frame for these two teams. We mentioned strike spare off the sheet a couple frames ago for Indian Trails, 225. The lefty, Josh Jacoby, for Oak Creek can step up. Punch all three in the 10th for 226. And this is where you see where these young players are made of. It's not sometimes when they need to throw that strike. It's when they just need to make that single pin. Keeps it on line, no doubter there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome to your 10th frame, game three. It's down to these two anchor players. Jacoby Furl Creek, Weber for Indian Trail. Jacoby looking to keep the 226 alive. Oh, and the wrap seven. Put the ball where he needed to. Just had that four pin fly around the seven. And now that drops their maximum to 205, and that's just gonna mean count in the 10th frame for Indian Trail to take home the title. There's the cover. And Jacoby's gonna be thinking about that shot on the drive down home back to Oak Creek, no doubt about it. You put out a quality shot, and you, that, that wrap four pin around the seven's just gonna eat at your craw on the way home, but he showed up. He threw a great shot. Almost put the ball almost exactly where it needed to be, probably a quarter inch either direction, and that four pin comes off the sideboard. And of course, when it doesn't matter, strike ball always falls on the fill ball. 92.2% .2 of the time that fill ball turns into a strike. There you go. And all Travis Weber needs is six pins on the first shot. Actually, four pins on the first shot. Pardon my math. No, it is six pins. Six pins on the first shot for Weber. He makes it a move point. Gets all ten down. And there it is. One hell of a battle between both these teams. They've been in these final matches before, maybe not all these players, but definitely these two institutions 
And this time, Indian Trail comes out on top two games to one to round out our boys' final of this 2021-22 Midwinter High School Classic. Count there, doesn't matter. But we have champions. You saw your girls' champions earlier from Beaver Dam, your boys' champions this season for the Midwinter Classic. Indian Trail out of Kenosha. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the live stream today from Castle Lanes and Racine. Keep an eye on the PBA website this coming week as I'll be making my way out to Las Vegas. And you'll be able to watch the PBA Regional Players Invitational for free on the PBA Facebook page and on the PBA website. Handshakes given, medals to be given out. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you for our next high school bowling event down the road. Watch the $2 Phil Facebook page to get that info. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Have a happy, happy new year. And get ready for some PBA action from Las Vegas coming up starting on Monday. Good night, everybody.